It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented, of course, by DraftKings. Really excited for today's guest. We actually have a couple different connections, but I'm telling you, this is like the next level of competitive advantage. His name's Tom Nugent from Elite Performance Solutions, and they basically help improve your brain performance. You're starting to work with a bunch of athletes. Tom Brady has done this stuff. I am fascinated by what people are doing in this area because just like you can lift weights, you can more or less lift your brain to improve your brain. So really, really looking forward to talking with Tom momentarily because more and more teams, more and more professional athletes in all sports are getting in to this brain performance and improving brain performance, which makes a lot of sense. I don't care what sport you're talking about. The brain makes a big deal. You know what else? I don't care what you're talking about. Raycon earbuds. I'm literally going to grab mine right now because they're that good. I love them. And I need to make sure I don't forget to take them on my trip. I'll tell you right now, Raycon's the best way to listen to music. It's these little blue ones that I'm holding in my hand right now. The battery life is incredible. I've never even gotten close to being low on the battery life. I like that they're not like these big white things sticking out of my ears. 32-hour battery life, eight hours of playtime. Here's what I love, for you guys especially. They're half the price of the other premium audio brands. Half the price. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, my listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tucker. That's buyraycon.com slash Tucker to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. If you ever saw me anywhere working out, these are what I have in. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. I know I say this all the time, but I've been looking forward to this interview for a while for a couple of different reasons. Number one, you guys know, I like anytime I get somebody from either one of my alma maters on the show, Why Missing in Pennsylvania or Princeton, which is the case with today's guest, Tom Nugent, who's the co-founder of Elite Performance Solutions. And what's cool about this is uh, Tom and his partner actually reached out to me, just emailing me, Ross at Ross Tucker.com, which by the way, that is a good lesson in life, right? Like you need to pitch yourself. You need to sell yourself. That's always a great way to get in touch with me. You want to advertise on the show, whatever it might be, right? And so they had two connections because Tom's partner is actually from near my hometown. So they kind of double dipped on, <laughs> on the connections. But more importantly, I like to give you guys topics and subjects I think are really interesting. And this is hot right now. I mean, I don't even know what they call it, neuroperformance. I know Russell Wilson's like the champion of this and some of the stuff he does before games, I don't really know what he's doing. But I've seen other guys, Drew Brees, some of the stuff he was doing before games when he was playing. And so this is something... Tom, that you are heavily, heavily involved in. And I got to be honest with you. I mean, I retired in 2008. I have no idea what they've got guys doing now from a neuro performance standpoint and how much of it, uh, an impact it can make, what kind of difference. I mean, I know for some of the college prospects coming out that some of the testing they do is just based on how quickly you can mental process. And some of these teams are taking it very seriously. So anyway... Long-winded way of me saying, welcome to the show, Tom. Really excited to have you. Thanks, man. Great to be here. All right. So let, let's just start with neuroperformance because, you know, I don't, I, I don't even know if I knew that that was the term for it. I guess I just knew that more and more guys are trying to train their brain 
and to train their brain to be better. And I don't know if we really did that. When I was playing, Tom, we would have like a sports psychologist come in. And to be honest with you, um, I did not think it was very beneficial. And when I found out the amount of money those teams were paying, <laughs> I thought, wow. I mean, maybe I should become a sports psychologist. And what really ruined it for me is he came to see us on a Monday and the next day he went to see the Dolphins on a Tuesday. We were playing the Dolphins that week, you know? So it's like, come on, man. I mean, come on. So anyway, and then, by the way, I don't blame him. I do the same thing. But let's just start with, with what, what it is and what it isn't, Tom. Actually, maybe take a step back before we even get into that. Who are you? Like, who are you and how are you even on the show that you even know to talk about this? Yeah, so uh, great great intro, right? And it's it's always the first question I get asked when I meet a, a new coach or a new uh, a team or a new player. Like, what do you, what do, you do? What, what is it exactly you do? Um, but, you know, so, you know, I'm a neuroscientist at heart. Uh, so, yes, let's go Tigers. Let's get it in there. Uh, and when you think about what neuro performance is, uh, you know, it, Princeton was pretty much the home of where this idea came from, this, this concept of neuroplasticity, right? That your, your brain can actually grow and generate new pathways, right? Um, and so I, I feel lucky that I had the opportunity to learn from the folks who were, were basically the hallmark starters of this concept. So Elizabeth Gould uh, taught a class got me really interested in it and set me on my path for my career. Um, so, you know, talking about me, I started out like every other neuroscientist out there, uh, kind of working on fixing broken brains. I started at NIH, uh, worked in uh, pediatric psychiatric diseases, uh, childhood onset schizophrenia, like really heavy, uh, not fun to talk about stuff. Uh, but then I quickly realized that that kind of academic route wasn't for me. Uh, I didn't really want the Groundhog Day effect day in and day out where I wake up and I'm kind of doing the same thing day in and day out, right? It's That's academic life. So I wound up moving over to the uh, Department of Defense and went from a very slow pace to a breakneck speed pace of how can we benefit the warfighter uh, by studying the brain? And so got heavily involved with special operators in the military, uh, the you know all the guys that you see in the movies and video games and all that and uh, really learned quickly how we could improve skill acquisition, uh, improve marksmanship through neural feedback, right? How can we take what we understand about the brain and provide advantages out in theater, out where, where they're actually doing the work? Uh, and so, you know, before long, the, the concept kind of clicked with me. I'm like, you know, what about athletes, right? Like, what about, they're kind of under the same heavy pressures you know, that big magnifying glass, the time sensitive pressures that, you know, that fight or flight moment of being in the trenches, it's it's very similar in a lot of ways. And this could apply. And so I uh, spent spent the next couple of years really trying to help educate uh, the, the world on what this idea of neuro performance is. And, and it's really just thinking about training from the neck up. Right. You, you talk about, you know, that people are just starting to get into this now. And, and honestly, it's everybody's big, everybody's fast and everybody's strong. now, Right. So where do you get your next competitive advantage? And, and what a lot of folks aren't thinking about is, you know, those milliseconds of difference between the great players and the good players. Right. You, you look at Tom Brady's career and his time to throw. Right. It got faster as he got older. That's not something that you can talk about for most quarterbacks, right? Uh, and, and for him, it, it came down to brain training. So my, my co-founder, uh, Steve, who's from your, your hometown area, he was actually one of the guys that originally built some of the software that helped Tom Brady get better, right? And so we started to see these early effects in athletes. Uh, you started to see studies come out about measuring processing speed and how that influences the, the number of steals and assists per minute of play in the NBA. Right. Uh, decision making skills, your ability to kind of go through progressions, your ability to get off the, the snap faster. Right. It's it's about what's between your ears. And so we really looked at how can we help improve players, improve coaches, understanding of players uh, to be able to better recruit, uh, better train and better optimize them to get the most performance out of them as possible when they're out on the field. And that's really where, where this, this idea of neuroperformance is coming from. So 
man, um, this could maybe be a two part interview. I've got, I got a lot of stuff for you, Tom, but, um, first thing I would tell you is I, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I love doing them. And I always tell the story about Tom Brady, 18 years playing football, never, never played with a guy that cared as much about the quarterback center snap as he did. And he sort of looked at it like the perfect snap lets him get back from center like a millisecond faster so he can look at the defense a millisecond sooner and throw the ball a fraction of a second. Like he really, he really looked at it that way. I mean, 18 years playing football and, and quarterback center exchange is like the most boring thing, but it wasn't to him. The other thing I would tell you, Tom, um, there's no doubt in my mind that I would not have had an NFL career were it not for my, um, I guess, um, competitive neuro advantage. I, I don't know how, I don't know the best way to describe it, but there's no question that I, um, football intelligence, processing things, that that stuff came naturally for me compared to other guys. And by the way, it has nothing to do with book smarts or whatever. There's plenty of guys that probably didn't even graduate or could barely graduate, but they they process like this. And plenty of other guys, by the way, that went to Ivy League schools or, you know, great test takers, they just couldn't process what was going on fast enough. So that's that's really interesting to hear you say that. Um, so so what, I, got what, a great example, I got a great example of that yeah. for you, right? So uh, a few years ago, worked with a uh, BCS championship team. Uh, we went in and we worked with basically the spine of the team, right? So um, running back, quarterback, center, linebacker, safety, right? Uh, gave us the entire depth chart for those positions, but blinded us to who was who, right? So ran them through all of our assessment, our cognitive combine, uh, put some EEG headsets on them, had them do some different tasks, right? Don't want to get into the weeds with it. But basically, we, we ran our assessment on all these players, ranked sorted each player in their position group by their, by their cognitive combine score, by their brain scores from, from their EEG, and came back to them and said, this would be kind of the cognitive depth chart that we would have for each position. And lo and behold, without understanding, you know, whether they were a freshman or a senior, where they were the first string or, or Q4, right? Our depth chart from our cognitive data, 100% lined up with their depth chart for actually who got on the field, right? So, so there, to your point, there is something to be said about what's going on from the neck up and how that translates into success out on the field. And it's just, it's great to see that kind of quantified with hard neuroscience data and use that to help improve players to get them to be one of those starting positions. I'm sure that, um, the way you can help improve performance is fantastic, Tom. For me, it's always been Labatt Blue Light. You know, that's the best way for me to improve my cognitive performance. If you want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. So here's what we're talking about, um, Tom. Basically, there's two parts of this. Is it fair to say? Part one is testing and seeing where guys are at. And then part two is I'm assuming you have some type of mechanism whereby the guys can, like you talked about, about Brady earlier, can work on this cognitive improvement and, and improve and better themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's for us, it's, it's testing, training and tracking, right? Um, the, the brain is an immensely uh, complex system. And so we, we're, we're stressing it. Uh, we're working it out all the time without even realizing it. Right. So the idea of training it means that you actually have to put a lot more, a lot more plates on the rack, um, so to speak. Right. Uh, you know, just having a conversation, going about your day to day routine, we're, we're using a good chunk of our of our processing. So in order to challenge that, you need to be able to know how to challenge it. And that's where the testing comes in. Right. So we get that analysis. We get that uh, initial assessment. Then we put you on a path direct for you. Right. Not not for myself versus you. It's for you. And 
now you're on your path and, and we can show short term benefits within a couple of hours. So what I would call a boost. Right. So if you wanted to get ready before the game so that on the first snap you're ready to go, whereas I'm sure, you know, some players, it may have taken them, you know, 10, 15 snaps, a quarter to really kind of get into their groove. Right. We can help you get there a little bit faster. Uh, if it's something about decision making where where they, you know, somebody has a little bit of difficulty kind of making that initial decision, they could be the fastest person there is. But then when it gets a little bit more complicated, they slow down. We can help improve that. And so we can actually see those changes in matters of weeks. We can measure those changes to show you physiological changes in your brain, which is where that idea of neuroplasticity comes from. You know, you go to the gym, you work out, you, you expect to see gains, right? If I tell you to work out your brain, you don't get a bigger forehead. Your, your, your head doesn't get veinier. There's no, there's no good feedback for that, right? We can actually provide that feedback for you to show you how those pathways in your brain are getting stronger. And then over time, it's just maintaining that, right? So whether it's you're, you're in kind of the twilight of your career and you're trying to really stay at the top part of your game mentally and cognitively, or if you're just trying to continuously improve, that training path changes. And so we help track and monitor that to be able to put you at your best and continue to break through your ceiling over and over again. Tom, you are an athlete, right? Yes, sir. What sport? Uh, track and field. What event? Uh, so I was mostly on the field side. I was a, I was a long jumper at heart, but uh, I, I did a good amount of the sprints as well. I was a short distance runner, so. Wow, okay. So I guess I'm curious like knowing what you know now, because I, I guess especially I, I think what you guys are doing is especially relevant for football, and I'm sure it is for other sports as well, um, but especially the, the, the mental processing, I feel like, of team sports with the spatial awareness. Is there a way you feel like this could have helped you with track? Oh, 100%. I mean, how many times have you seen in the Olympics races that are won or lost by how quickly someone gets out of the blocks? Right. You know, so, so and I put my neuroscientist hat on that's auditory processing speed. Right. And so if I can, if I can shave my recognition by you know, milliseconds there and then shave my ability to react by milliseconds there I'm out of the blocks faster, right? And that makes a huge difference. So you think about, you know, these these me versus me moments of track or, or swimming or, you know, even field goal kicking uh, or shooting a free throw, right? I'd love free throw example because uh, it's always the same distance, you know, 15 feet, 10 feet high, right? Or 18 feet, excuse me. And, uh, but you look at a first quarter free throw versus a free throw in the last like five seconds of the game, it's all here, right? And so you can actually train your brain. Uh, uh, applying some of the work that I did with special operators, we can put neurofeedback uh, headbands on people. So I used to have field goal kickers for NFL teams out uh, kicking field goals for hours, wearing an EEG headset. And I was measuring their brain activity and was able to predict when they would make or miss based off of their preparatory state before they actually kicked the ball. So being able to provide some of that recognition to an athlete to let them know what it feels like when they're in that proper expert state before they go to accomplish something is tremendous value to an individual, right? But then it feeds into to coaches as well when you talk about recruiting or, or free agency, uh, you know, better understanding more than just the physicality and the character of an individual. Now you can start to understand kind of the building blocks of what helps them apply their their capabilities on the field, right? We're not just measuring hand size anymore. If I can tell you definitively that this person has the fastest decision, the fastest and most accurate decision-making ability out of anybody else, you're going to want to take a look at that guy. What did you guys do with Brady, Tom? So that was that was prior to me. That was that was uh, my, my co-founders uh, earlier days, um, you know, Brady actually wrote about it in his book uh, that came out a few years ago. There's a chapter <clears throat> that's dedicated all, all towards that. But, it, but essentially, it, it boils down to exactly what we're talking about. He, he got some assessments done, um, 
recognized there's an opportunity uh, to improve and then went and improved by doing training. Right? And, and that's, and that kind of global concept is what we're, we're working with athletes and CEOs of companies and, you know, special operators in the military to help them improve and be at their best all the time. And that could, that could be even something as simple as being more efficient with your recovery. If I could help you get better sleep or help you get to sleep faster every night using neurofeedback, why wouldn't you do that? Right. If I can be more efficient and wake up more rested and ready to go, if I could measure my cognitive readiness uh, within five minutes to actually see if today's a good day or if I should take it easy to help reduce injuries, why wouldn't I want to know that? Right. It's, it's just all these things that are there that we're not taking advantage of right now. What about like for me now? I'm, I'm selfish. Like, what about for me, um, you know, keeping my mental capability, my neuroplasticity as sharp as I possibly can for multiple reasons? Yeah, I mean, it's it's becoming one of the largest ta talked about things in kind of just normal everyday life is we're getting older. Right. I mean, this is something that's inevitable for everybody. And, and, and what comes with getting older cognitive decline. Right. It's just a natural part of our life. And, and that's that's not even going into, you know, the, as, as you kind of get into those those older years and, and you start to look at you know, dementia and, and other things around that. Right. One of the beauties of brain training is that it's it's what we call neuroprotective. It, it can actually help stave off that natural decline that you see as you get older. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a fun term, but, you know, we can help you reduce your brain age in a sense, right. With cognitive training, you can, you can become sharper. Um, you know, I've had uh, folks in the military tell me that, uh, you know, they come home and they're, they're more present and aware because they're not as mentally fatigued uh, because their brain's sharper, right? And so that, that they can actually spend more time with their kids and, and actually be engaged instead of just being completely drained, right? Um, but, you know, it's it's remembering faces. It's remembering names. It's, you know, we used to have to remember phone numbers. We don't have to do that anymore, right? Because everything's just available uh, with the, the touch of a, a phone. But it's, it's these different ways that we don't realize how much we use our brain on a day-to-day -day basis that start to slide as we get older, we can slow that down and even reverse it in a lot of cases and, and improve that brain age. So there's benefits no matter where you are in your career. Tom, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. This was so interesting. I'll be curious to follow up with you at some point and see, you know, what you guys do with NFL teams and, and what the, the, um, the progress has been. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Go Tigers. That was awesome. I knew it would be. I actually now want to learn even more about that stuff. Very, very cool. Almost as cool as West Shore Home. Look, I've been telling you guys about them since what? The spring? Actually, maybe like last season. Did they come over during the season? They came over to my house early in the morning. Tore out both of our old tubs upstairs and showers. Like the old fiberglass thing. When I tell you beautiful new bath and shower unbelievable my wife has high standards they met them she was thrilled my kids you know it was my girl's bathroom <clears throat> ecstatic they just felt so much cooler they literally when people come to our house now they literally say come see our bathroom you got to come see our bathroom it's that cool you can see it for yourself at westshorehome.com slash ross that's also where you can get your schedule a free estimate where they also, by the way, have free installation right now. And you get the free estimate. Send me the email, ross at rosstucker.com, and get in the July best ball draft with me and Joe Dolan. So win, win, win. Westshorehome.com slash Ross. Big fan of those dudes. Big fan of all of you guys. Big fan of getting back in the United States. I'll be having a lot of takes for you guys on Wednesday, much to discuss in terms of the NFL over the last week or so. Fired up for Wednesday's Ross Tucker football podcast. I think we're done here. 
Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. Shout outs, Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com, Go-Bangles.com, Evergreen Economics, BackOfficeSchedule.com, and the single best gift I'm aware of, the gift that lasts a lifetime, MyFrontPageStory.com.